uh, I can show you the settings I would use to uh, to actually print this. I would use a 0 0.25 millimeter layer height um, and horizontal shells. This is not really important, uh, not for this part. Um, the bottom will be glued to the chassis, so it's not important to have many layers there. The top is maybe a little bit more important because it will it will make it uh, flatter if you have uh, more layers there. It will make it more rigid and more precise. But I will still sand it to get it really flush. And then with infill, uh, I still have this on 5%. I would put it on 100 uh, when I print this. It doesn't matter because now it's it, it's so the walls are so thin so I think this part would be solid anyway it depends on the amount of perimeters um, yeah, maybe th there would be a gap inside because 2 perimeters is 0 0.8 millimeter and we have a 2 millimeter wall so that will be 0 0.8 millimeter one, uh, one surface and then a little gap in between and then 0 0.8 for the other so yeah we could put 100% infill and I don't use a brim uh, or any other adhesive extras and I don't use support and here I use the standard settings from the Prusa profile uh, so I don't know about the, the speeds for your printer if you have another printer uh, what else? There's not really anything else uh, the important stuff is the layer height and the, uh, and the layers really. So let's see how this looks when we slice it. Yeah, the red is infill, so... And this this is of course a super tiny part that touches the, uh, the print bed, so... I'm not really sure if this is a good idea, if these walls will actually come off. This will probably come off, so we're going to do something about that. So let's go back to Fusion. This is why it's good to, early, to very early just take a look in the, in, in the slicer to see uh, if you if you need to do something, and in this case it looks really like we need to do something there. Uh, we're gonna add some we're gonna add some parts uh, that will hold these together, some walls inside here. I don't want to put I don't want to print these uh, these walls laying down because that's gonna make them look ugly. So let's instead activate. We activate the body, and we have th we split it there. I will go back to before I split it, and I will actually put something. I will put a small wall here, right at the split. So let's draw a rectangle here, and I don't want to want it to be too high because I don't want it to be visible from uh, from the windows so let's make it let's make it 15 millimeters high and now I will use symmetric extrusion so it extrudes the same amount on both sides so one millimeter on each side and now Fusion thinks I want to cut and I don't, I want to join. So this will be part of the of the body. So there you have it. So now when we split, it will split right inside, in the middle of this wall. So we will have wall on both parts. But I think it would be also a good idea to have a wall, or maybe, yeah. Oh, well, maybe that's enough. That's enough. We like gambling, right? 
this this will be enough. You can of course use a brim to secure it more to the build plate. Now I'm going to have to print this to just prove that it's possible, right? Or we're just being... Or I'm just being a bit stupid. Yeah, I'm being a bit stupid now because I did this totally unnecessarily. So let's go back, let's go back and uh, rethink this for a bit. We'll, we're gonna delete this wall that we made and extrude, and, and um, we're gonna export these again. And we go back to Slicer and we add it. And of course what I did not think about first was that we we're going to print this upside down instead. There we go. Now we have something that holds it. Um, no, I'm not sure it's enough but uh, this, is a, this is for sure a printing challenge. A worthy challenge. Oh no, it's uh, main body part one. Main body part two. There we have it. We export the SDL and for some weird reason uh, Slicer wants to rename it, but I don't want that, so there we go, and if we slice it right now, yeah, it's not something interesting really, but uh, this is what it looks like, but we can, we can of course, um, I could actually recommend to use 4 or 5 millimeter brim, it will look like this. So you have an you have a bit of extra uh, adhesive to the build plate, and that's quite easy to get or get rid of. Uh, however, I would I would not recommend to use support because it's really unnecessary. These windows can be bridged without problem. And let's see how long this will take to print. One and a half hour, roughly. So that's not that's not too bad. So let's see how the chassis looks. The chassis center part. So let's see. Mm, let's see here if we slice it. Here we for sure don't need a brim because we have a huge area against the build plate. So away with the brim. This will print okay for sure. I will export it so I get the right orientation. Oh, sorry. I don't want to get more of them. Is there something else? Yeah, it's the roof. The roof, the print adapted roof. The most important part. Uh, the most interesting part, at least. Now we're going to see how this looks. So let's slice it and see. Here you should use a brim also. Uh, 
and also don't use 100% infill that's just gonna eat a lot of material we will reduce that uh, we can use 5% I usually go on the extreme ends I either use 100% or nothing almost because as you can see even that even at 5% it's it's quite a structure going on in there so that's how it will print and and as i said you should you should use uh, i think it's a good idea to have a brim on this one to add a little bit of uh, bad adhesion and this should work. It shouldn't knock these out when you when you have this connecting structure in between. So So let's export that one. And let's just check the other parts. And now I have not exported the the boogie parts, but they are they are already on Thingiverse, and you can export them the same way as I, as I do this. And there there are already parts, there are already uh, STL parts containing all the all the things you need for the boogie. I'm gonna see if they are in here. Yeah, here you have it. Here you have uh, an STL with two boogies with everything you need, and you have a uh, one with all the wheels that, uh, also. So there's no reason to go through the ordeal of exporting all the all the parts there. Just down do download this instead. We're just importing them to Fusion just to have a reference when we're when we're working, so we can see how the boogies look and how the complete structure looks. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we need? Uh, we need the window frames are interesting because what what we want to do is we want to we want to have them with the frame the outer part down against the print bed and we don't want to brim. That's an ugly thing. Away with the brim. So. There we have it. And now you can see that it's actually only printing one layer. So this this is a this is a case where I would go down in layer height. Um, let's see how this looks. I would go down in layer height and, um, until I get at least two layers. We have to have at least two layers. It might be also the first layer that uh, the first layer is set to too thick. Yeah, first layer height. Um, let's put that at 0 0.15. Now I get two layers at least. That's that's uh, that's I think is the minimum. You should never never print something with just one layer. Uh, it will be super thin and it will be almost uh, almost see through. Even if you have a colored material, it will be transparent. We could actually have made this a bit thicker in the CAD as well. So if you if you think two layers now is uh, a little bit too. Uh, if it is too thin you can print one and you can have a look at it and see how it looks and if you think it's too thin just go in and, and uh, extrude a bit more and make it thicker in the CAD and export it again so what we have to do now is we we'll just have to multiply this we had seven windows if I remember correctly or did we three four five six seven yes seven windows so we will set number of copies to seven or I'm sorry not seven fourteen and we can try the auto range feature 
that it works pretty well, so we'll stick with that. Um, frames, 14 pieces. And we delete all them. Now we need the doors. Oh, I clicked the wrong. I clicked the wrong. It was the Y axis. So, like that. And I need four pieces. There we have it. You can just slice for the sake of it. There we actually made it a bit thicker, we can see, because we had one, two, three lines, or ev even almost four lines on the... That's weird. Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's stick with that. Also, we can have a look at the ends, the rubbery things that I don't have no idea what they're called. Chassis and car and I think we called it there. Oh, it's got the right orientation just from start. And we need two of them. We're just going to print them like this. We'll have a look at the slicing. Yeah, that's good. Let's export it like that. So that's basically it, I think. The design is um, basically done, and we have a working, working I shouldn't say, but we have a, we have a train car, and I think I'll leave it at here, and you can of course keep on adding details with the same, the same workflow and the same the same ways of working with the geometries. Make components and uh, use what you already have as references. Click on surfaces and create sketches from them. And uh, go on from there. And please ask any questions if there's something you miss. Yep, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, take care. Yep. Yeah.